Intel Core Ultra Lunar Lake processor gets spotted. Intel XCS's 1.3 gets released with revamped upscaling profiles. Qualcomm claims superiority over Apple, Intel, and AMD. And lastly, AMD has begun their development for RDNA 4 based Navi 48 GPU. Okay, so first of all, we have some information from Michael at X here, and you can see is that it, it says Intel Corporation Lunar Lake client platform slash LNL MLP5 detected with 3100 megahertz processor, meaning 3.1 gigahertz right and intel core tm ultra 5234v that's the first processor we can see although it says 2.1 gigahertz so i'm guessing 2.1 is the base clock and boost clock is kind of strange shouldn't be this because it doesn't make sense 31 3.1 would be the boost clock where currently it's going over 5 gigahertz for intel core processors so it's pretty weird that that would be the case but maybe i guess it is not fully unlocked yet but then again it's a very very early sample so no problem but we can see that the naming we're, they're going for is Intel Core Ultra 5234V. That's the name they're going for, which is a very weird naming scheme that Intel has chosen this time around. Intel has detached the idea of Core i, so basically now the going the one they're going for is Intel Core Ultra or Intel Core Ultra, meaning that it can overclock or uh, yeah, that basically is the case. And non-ultra means that you cannot overclock. That would be my guess, but yes, that's the first processor we can see, which is the Intel Core Ultra 5234V base clock is 2.1 and also it says core spar package is 8 which is kind of strange because threads are also 8 it's a bit weird kind of processor because it doesn't really make sense i'm guessing that this particular model is a 6 core processor but it isn't because it says core spar package is 8 cores obviously it's not gonna be full flat 8 cores it should be like 4 performance and 4 efficiency core but i could be wrong with that because you know we're still considering ultra 5 because 5 means meaning it would be a mid-range processor, right? So it should have 6 core as, you know, performance core, but it says core spark package is 8, which is weird. Also, you can tell that the, the threads spark package is only 8. So it is kind of weird that the way they're going for with this kind of packaging cores and threads, I don't understand it yet. Maybe this is an early sample, so we'll see when the full specs come out, of course. But still, it's pretty weird. And that's the first Lunar Lake processor we get to see here. Next up, Intel has released their XCS's one. 1.3 and with this 1.3 update with the intel xcss it's pretty good not gonna lie so first of all, we get to see some perform performance benchmark here as you can see over here and it says xcss 1.3 preview on intel arc a750 and yeah they have tested certain games also using the other upscaling tech like the xcss previous one of course and no upscaling so let's look into it so in hitman 3 we're getting at 1440p ultra ray tracing is enabled we get to see 69 fps from xcss is 1.3 versus 663 fps on xcss we're not going to look into the no upscaling because that's not the point here but yeah it is gaining like six fps here so that's a good gain small gain but not bad also in cyberpunk 2077 with the same settings look 4040p high ray tracing on we get to see 71 fps versus 66 fps not bad and hogwarts legacy again in similar kind of settings here we get to see 76 fps versus 69 nice and the witcher 3 call of duty and diablo's gay show some similar gains though however diablo 4 does get a lot more gain 91 versus 71 that's a pretty decent gain there ghost run doesn't really see that much difference only 5 fps so it's marginal doesn't really matter they've also tested the ultra 7 155h and yeah that's quite interesting this is the meteor like processor of course with the igpu getting tested here and well overall you can see the performance gain is marginal not much in my opinion but you know it's a free game because you know xcss 1.3 is also a free update for the xcss so yeah it's a free game i don't mind that but not a huge game overall but that was not the point anyway because look at this one here we get to see some visual differences and here i would say yeah i mean it did improve a lot because previously you could see clearly that there is some yeah some problem going on over here in this kind of like i feel like geometry being the issue here but here you can see it has been greatly improved however if you look closely you will see some flickering going on so it's not perfect yet with the xcs 
as 1.3 but obviously better way better than you can anticipate and of course they brought in their new quality presets just like the other upscaling tech where you can choose the quality presets and there are plenty of them which is quite kind of interesting because if you look into it they have ultra performance previously it was just performance that wasn't the case so they have ultra performance performance balanced quality ultra quality and ultra quality plus meaning basically that the ultra quality plus is close to the native anyway so i wouldn't consider that as an upscaling tool however because you know it's quite close even the performance if you look closely here 38 and 41 on cyberpunk 2077 so yeah not a big gain overall here for the ultra quality plus preset but the other free presets like the ultra quality gives us some decent gain and quality also gives us quite a lot of gain though i wouldn't really use other presets at 1440p because you know 1440p i don't think that would do a great deal with these presets the balance performance and ultra performance so i would really focus on the ultra quality and quality so yeah intel xcs's 1.3 looks promising has improved the visual quality and also performance so that's not bad because not only that it supports over 100 supported titles which is pretty neat so we'll see what happens when intel xcs is 1.3 and how it can you know change the upscaling environment with other upscaling being available at the same time next up we have something very interesting and we might be seeing some competition into the cpu market especially when we consider the laptop or notebook qualcomm has claimed serious claims here telling that it can beat intel's core ultra which is crazy i know so the qualcomm snapdragon x elite is their newer generation of processor which is based on orion based arm chips and it is possibly beating intel's core ultra which is still take it as a grain of salt because you know the benchmarks they have presented doesn't really tell you much though they do say that they are beating some of the competition which is crazy so there, right now there are two processors from this generation which is the snapdragon x elite x1 e80 100 and snapdragon x elite x1 e84 100 and of course yeah they're paired with 60 16 gigs 64 gigs and of course the 100 pairing with again 32 gigs however this particular model was used for ai demos so we're going to focus on these two anyway if you look closely here we can see the qualcomm snapdragon x elite is being compared with the m3 and it's in the geekbench 6 test here in the multi-threaded cpu performance we're looking at x elite reaching 15610 and m3 is reaching 12154 however they don't mention m3 pro or m3 max which is kind of expected because i feel like snapdragon cannot really reach that level of performance the m3 pro level that's why they're comparing m3 because it's a clear win you can clearly tell next up when you look closely here we get to see some graph here and while well, they're claiming is that up to 54 percent faster in cpu performance versus competition at iso power so basically if you close look look closely here you can see that it's a geekbench v6 single thread test we're looking at and that's the snapdragon x elite comparing with the amd ryzen 9 7940 hs which is the amd phoenix and intel core ultra 7 155h a meteor like processor so they're claiming at this particular range it's at 54 percent better or faster but also limiting the power level here meaning that it is requiring less power which is 65 percent less power but giving you more performance which is 54 percent similarly amd ryzen 9 and intel core ultra 7 155h but however we have to think closely here if you look right over to this particular graph when you go down right over here here you see it's around 20 watts i'm pretty sure amd ryzen 9 7940hs is limited to 20 watts right it can go beyond that S similarly intel core ultra 155h can also go beyond that should be so when you restrict them right over here it doesn't give you the full picture yeah i mean in this particular graph obviously we can clearly tell that snapdragon x elite will be winning because well it's only limited to i guess between 10 to 15 watts but when you go beyond that meaning at 35 watts what happens then we don't know because the graph doesn't really tell you that exactly so it's like a, a nitpicking going on so yeah i mean in certain cases it will win but not in overall case i believe also in the multi-thread performance we're looking at in similar case now we get to see something interesting because now i feel like the level playing field has been met somewhat because now the performance power consumption here is around 40 watts and snapdragon x elite is 52 percent faster when you compare the intel core ultra but also the intel core ultra 7 and the amd ryzen 9 7940 
hs is going beyond 50 watts like reaching 60 or 70 watts respectively so yeah in this case i would say it is kind of fair because you know it is taking more power input but also delivering less compared to the snapdragon x elite so in this case it kind of makes it a little bit fair because you know it, it is using 40 watts to gain that level of performance here so not bad 52 percent faster compared to intel core ultra h 7 155h not bad here and next up i'll also test the geekbench score but this time around they're using the intel core ultra 9 185h so that is quite interesting here so if you compare that it is saying that 51 person gain in single thread but then again as i said the power consumption is limited severely limited so i feel like this particular test is not really giving you the full picture here but in multi-thread however we get to see some clear gains here because you, you can see here the power levels and i don't think it's that much limited because you know intercore ultra 79 185h does go beyond 70 watts so kind of fair you could say that because you know it's in the notebook so it is pushing the limit somewhat but snapdragon x elite still gains and in this case 41 percent faster compared to intel core intel core ultra 9 185h so in multi-thread performance we could say that the performance are quite good but in the single thread it's kind of like not giving you the full picture because you know it's, it's limiting the power or it's not taking as much as power because you know again geekbench doesn't really give you the full picture but again is again i guess similarly in wildlife extra they also tested the intel core 7 155h and here it's 36 percent faster and also this test seems fair because the power consumption doesn't seem limited because you know at 40 watts or similar to 40 watts intel core 7 155h is losing to snapdragon x elite at around 30 watts so yeah somewhat like fair 36 percent faster so that's not bad they also tested some benchmarks which in my opinion doesn't really you know give you any output or any info because you know the test they've you know done is like very simple generic test like office 365 apps really okay anyway local video playback web browsing youtube streaming and teams video calls so yeah it's not really like that level of uh performance anyway but then again for notebooks it is kind of important because you know battery life does matter and in this case overall you can clearly clearly see that snapdragon x elite is better in terms of longer battery life so yeah i guess you can claim some success there but you know not that exciting we also get to see some benchmarks showcased here that the x elite x1 e8100 clocking at 3.4 gigahertz which is a 12 core processor which is kind of exciting because 12 core is a lot paired with 16 gigs of ram and we get to see this kind of performance from all these benchmarks here though they don't really compare so it's kind of pointless still not bad that they did deliver such performance metrics here similarly at 84 100 paired with 64 gigs clocking at 3.8 gigahertz also gives you this level of performance again if you want to look into it, you can see on the screen right over here you can pause the video but again it's not going to give you a full picture anyway because we're not comparing so yeah quite interesting to see 12 core for this level of processor they might be entering the pc market definitely well at least for notebook because we can already see that they have showcased their notebooks and these notebooks may be the first entry to the pc market from qualcomm at least into the in the sense of competitiveness and lastly we get to see some leak here from kepler and basically it's an interesting leak navi 48 he mentioned right over here and as you can see right over here it says rocm and that's right nv48 meaning navi 48 that has been published already at rocm which gives you a clear indication that in terms of software level of development amd has started working on it on the navi 48 meaning the and rdna4 so that is kind of kind of interesting stuff basically they've all already started working on the software level of development so only time will tell if we will we'll be getting navi 48 soon enough we also get to see some more information which is do you raw mango has asked this particular question which is do you know how many se n48 has and kepler has replied for a fake again four could be a guess but we'll see about that so yeah what do you think about qualcomm here are they gonna be the fourth processor maker in the pc market we'll see about that because notebooks is a good step in forward of course but it doesn't really give you the whole picture those benchmarks we get to see so will they be able to keep their promises or it will be just a like fake engagement we'll see about that i'm optimistic hopefully this will be better for the pc environment because this feels promising definitely